So, Capcom has been on an absolute tear the past few years, huh? For Resident Evil 7 convincing people to give them another chance and Monster Hunter World more or less saving them from bankruptcy, they've been going on what feels like a near legendary comeback tour, jumping from strength to strength. From the aforementioned 7 and Resident Evil Village being great new directions for the series on top of the remakes of 2, 3, and most recently 4 all standing up and showcasing what a remake can really be alongside the Final Fantasy 7 remake, Monster Hunter Rise and its expansion being awesome, the upcoming Exoprimal looking like good silly fun, and the fact that we're getting a new Dragon's Dogma game being a miracle, and then the turning around of late-era Street Fighter V showing that yes, Capcom can still make a decent fighting game. And this is to say nothing of the fact that Street Fighter VI has been out for the last two to three weeks and is already in the makings to be both a mainstay in fighting games for the next couple of years on top of being a potential modern classic. But I'm not here to talk about any of that today. Instead, I'm going to talk about a game that I feel like doesn't get enough recognition put on its name for not only continuing the streak that Capcom has been on, but is also a great update to a tried and true formula. If you're watching the background footage, you already know what it is. I'm Hamoud Adden, and this time, I'm going to tell you what's good about Mega Man 11. I feel like I need to add some extra context for this next bit. Mega Man 11 came out in October 2018, and was the first major release in the mainline Mega Man series since the release of Mega Man 10 in October of 2010, eight years apart. And we all know why this is. It was also around the time that Keiji Inafune left Capcom after the cancellation of several Mega Man games in development, most famously among them, Mega Man Legends 3. And then Inafune being the shrewd businessman that he is, I'm trying so hard not to be mean here, weaponized that resentment towards the Kickstarter funding of my number 9. And then it came out in 2016, it was thoroughly savaged by critics, Mega Man fans looking for a similar experience, and Kickstarter backers alike. If you need to look more into that whole situation, Matt McMuscles and Stop Skeletons from Fighting both put up what I consider to be at least, to be the definitive retrospectives on that game. Link to those in the description. And then, on December 2017, on the franchise's 30th anniversary, no less, Capcom unveiled Mega Man 11. And the reason why it took so long is that, according to an interview with Game Informer, producer Kazuhiro Tsuchiha said that after Infinite's departure, the atmosphere around Capcom was difficult and that no one wanted to step up and be definitively known as the Mega Man guy. This is where director Koji Oda stepped up and decided to be that guy and bring Mega Man back. I hope that this illustrates the time in which Mega Man 11 was developed and released, because after it came out, it proceeded to become the best-selling game in the entire franchise, a feat not done until the Battle Network Legacy Collection came out earlier this year. But I almost hear no one talk about it, which is where I'm coming in. Contrary to what's being shown on screen, I've actually played this game before. I got Mega Man 11 when it first came out in late 2018 on the Switch, and I managed to get through everything except for the Wily Castle stages. I decided to get it on PC because it was cheap during the Fanatical Spring Sale. Hey yo, Fanatical, if you're doing sponsorships, get at me. Your boy is down to shill. So if the footage seems a little sparse, that's why. Anyways, the game starts as any Mega Man game does, with a dream. Not really, but this one does. Dr. Wiley remembers an invention that he came up with in his university days with Dr. Light at Wish Shell for being too dangerous. He then brings it out of storage and uses it to steal a group of robots for his new schemes of outfitting them with this new double gear system, as he calls it. As it turns out, Light had a copy of it and outfits Mega Man with it at Mega's behest, and it's off to the races. It's not exactly Ian Flynn's writing, but it gets the job done. By the way, you should totally check out the Ian Flynn Mega Man comics. They're fucking rad. From there, we enter the standard eight robot masters on the character select screen that takes you through eight appropriately themed levels, all ending with a boss fight. This stuff you all know because it's been a thing since 1987. But I want to talk about the main change they've made, and it's the way the double gear system interacts with the rest of the game. For the longest time, Mega Man's baseline abilities, in the classic series at least, have always consisted of jumping, shooting, charging the Mega Buster, sliding, and calling rush, with most of those being added in as the classic series went on, and the first two having only jumping and shooting. And that's fine. A little boring, but fine. The other abilities will be ported over to the other sub-series, with the X-series famously adding armor sets that change your abilities in dramatic ways. But the classic series is where you go for the baseline jump and shoot man experience, and that's, again, perfectly fine. But this is where the double gear system comes into play. The double gear system is a new gameplay feature that has a ripple effect on the rest of the game. It's split into two parts, the speed gear and the power gear. The speed gear slows down time's enemy and yourself in the process while active, and the latter actively empowers your Mega Buster and Special Weapons with new effects. 
The aforementioned ripple effect is made immediately apparent, with the levels themselves being designed with the speed gear in mind, and the robot masters each having access to empowered states with half of them being implanted with the speed gear, and the other half being implanted with the power gear respectively. That last change really shakes up the boss fights in a significant way, and it's really fucking cool to see all these empowered bosses' abilities. They also act as a mirror to the double gear state. Mega Man, when dropped down to a low enough HP total, can activate both power and speed gear at the same time to get the benefits of both for a short period of time. But you need to watch out because you'll overheat and do less damage when cooling off. And this is also a thing with the speed and power gears normally since being able to be active at any time is balanced around being dangerous prototypes and need to be managed in regards to their heat or else you ain't got access to either of them. It's a neat system, probably not for everyone, but I really like it. If there's one thing about the levels in Mega Man 11 that I really like is the sense of escalation. Not just in the levels themselves, but in their relation to one another. Sure, levels ramp up and get more difficult and that's just good level design, but I love how you can go from something as simple as Block Man stage where the objective is avoid blocks to something like Fuse Man stage with conveyor belts, lightning beams, jumping puzzles involving lightning beams, enemies that mix into those and the double gear system on top of that. It's a great example of serial escalation in the game and I love it. Is Mega Man 11 the best Mega Man game? No. But then again, Mega Man X is God's gift to humanity, so it's hard to compete with that. Is it a good foundation for more new games in the future? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, Mega Man 11 is good. So in a sea of absolute bangers that came out after it, I can understand it getting lost in the shuffle of the Capcom comeback tour. But after a long time away, that's all it really needs to be. Here's hoping Capcom makes Mega Man 12 soon. I'm Ahmed Aden, and that's what I think is good about Mega Man 11. And that will be it for this week's video. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. I've really helped out the channel, and I deeply appreciate it. Thank you, have a wonderful day.